तुम्हार तुम गोटे स्क्रीन सेयार मु कर लुक आट योर स्क्रीन अबाउट नाउ सम इंपोर्टेंट थिंग्स अबाउट एनी काइंड ऑफ स्केल इज डायरेक्शन ऑफ मेजरमेंट और मेन नॉलेज अबाउट द डायरेक्शन ऑफ डिफरेंस मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ डिफरेंस और मैग्नीट्यूड मेजरमेंट स्केल वैल्यूज एज बीइंग इक्वल अक्रॉस द स्केल एंड ए जीरो नाउ अबाउट नॉमिनल स्केल when we think of nominal scale in psychology is being also widely used but the scale does not have any magnitude does not have direction of difference and other things are not also there all the four qualifying standards direction of difference magnitude of difference equal interval and unit zero these are all not available in nominal scale nominal scale is just a scale by name we can we can call it and uh, then the question is why that is nominal doesn't have any kind of thing. it is there is it is a scale which is also very um, very much used in kind of research and other things what is a nominal scale what are the characteristics now supposing i will tell you that if you are a male right one if you are a female right two and if you are a third gender right two means a male getting a score of 1 a female getting a score of 2 And a third gender getting a score of three. Now, if I ask you by from this scale, you can you say me that females are better than males and third genders are better than females because third genders they have a scale value of three. Am I audible? The phone for a slack cutting or like? Yes, sir. Amrita. सुबुजी अमृता यस सर ऑडिबल यस सर यस सर पूरा फोन पे पड़े आछला मैं डिक्लाइन कर तो था भी नाउ नॉमिनल स्केल हला आपुची माने ऑल ऑफ यू इवन अंडरस्टैंड ओडिया नॉमिनल स्केल हला तार ना मैग्नीट्यूड ओची ना डिफरेंट डायरेक्शन ऑफ भाई इट हैज हां नॉमिनल स्केल हैज नो reference of magnitude no reference of direction kon tar artha magnitude artha kon direction artha direction mane karam kahi bhi that you are a female if you are a female you uh, score 1 if you are a male score 2 and third gender 3 in that case if i ask third gender getting 3 are they better of women no that is not the not the question by getting three and that is why there is no direction of difference jodio jane ek pauchi jane dui pauchi jane teen pauchi scale re jodi direction of difference signify karu tan ta then we could have said that third gender is better than women but that is not there it is just an assigned scale and that is a nominal scale and magnitude of difference is also not there अलगा स्केल बुझे ले यू कैन यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ डिफरेंस एंड व्हाट इज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ डिफरेंस मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ डिफरेंस हला वुमेन मैम फीमेल गेटिंग 2 मेल गेटिंग 1 पार्ट के साउंड ऑफ टू द साउंड टू फॉर कारण आशु जी फीमेल गेटिंग 2 एंड मेल गेटिंग 1 द नेचुरली द क्वेश्चन इज इज इट दैट फीमेल्स आर टू टाइम्स देन द मेल्स फीमेल कोन दुई मेल मान को दुई गुण मान दुई पाइ छ मेल मेल एक पाउ छ नो दैट आंसर इज नॉट देयर बिकॉज़ द स्केल इज इन नॉमिनल स्केल इट हैज नो डायरेक्शन ऑफ नो रेफरेंस ऑफ मैग्नीट्यूड एंड आल्सो नो रेफरेंस ऑफ डायरेक्शन बुझेला ना किंतु नेक्स्ट स्केल इज ओरिजिनल स्केल ओरिजिनल स्केल इज अ काइंड ऑफ स्केल हैविंग ओनली डायरेक्शन ऑफ डिफरेंस बट नो मैग्नीट्यूड Can the ordinal scale? What is the representation of ordinal scale? Someone getting first position, someone second position, someone third position, someone fourth position. One, two, three, four. These are four people getting these positions. And if you ask me, if I ask you, whether first is one, first is better than the second or not? 
you will definitely say yes first one is better than the second second one is better than the third or not definitely second one is better than the third third one is better than the fourth means direction of difference is well marked you can understand about the direction of difference ek ek dui tharu bhalo dui tin tharu bhalo tin char tharu bhalo this difference you can understand कहूँ बाय द स्केल वी सी दैट समवन इज फास्ट हम गोली ए पिला फास्ट हला ए पिला सेकंड हला ए पिला थर्ड हला ए पिला फोर्थ हला देन द मेजरमेंट इज इन ओरिजिनल स्केल काहे कि न डायरेक्शन ऑफ डिफरेंस इज देयर वन इज बेटर देन टू दिस इज इंप्लाइड टू इज बेटर देन थ्री दिस इज इंप्लाइड वन इज बेटर देन थ्री दिस इज इंप्लाइड थ्री इज थ्री इज पुअरर देन वन दिस इज इंप्लाइड बोथ डायरेक्शन इज देन नो बट If I ask you the question, one is one as much better than two as two is better than three. A ke doi tharu jetti ki bhalo, doi tin tharu kono jetti ki bhalo. Can you answer this question? Anybody? Rajesh, ki Rajesh sorry. Mujhe di original scale toh mujhe pachari bhi. A ke doi tharu jetti ki bhalo, doi tin. Sir, I do not understand Odia. Can it be in English, please? My question is, ha. Huh? In a class, someone is first, someone is second, someone is third, someone is. I am explaining you ordinal scale, and ordinal scale has the characteristics of uh, knowing the difference. Direction of difference is known, but magnitude is not known. Direction of difference about direction of difference. I am asking you if. Whether one is better than the two or not, you will answer yes because one is fast. Fast or fast is better than the second. But that that is understood. But if I ask you, one is one as much better than two as two is better than three? Can you answer this question? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. no because magnitude is sir, not. Sir, if known. there will be magnitude, sir, then only we can answer. Ah, then you can answer. Magnitude nine. This is ordinal scale. Ordinal scale doesn't signify magnitude. When the scale is only having direction of difference but no magnitude, that scale is ordinal. Next scale is interval scale. In interval scale, there is reference of both magnitude and direction. What is the example of interval scale? In psychology, someone secured sixty-five percent. another another boy another student secured 60% and a third student secured 50% now who 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 among them is best one who secured 60% by 65% who among them is next best 60% who among them is third best 50% You can know the direction of difference. Kya kaha tu bhalo? That you can know. And now about the magnitude. So first, first secure sixty five, second secure sixty, third secure fifty. If I ask the same question, is first one as much better than the second? As second one is better than the third? What will be your answer? एक नंबर पिला दुई नंबर ठार जी भल दुई नंबर टा तीन नंबर ठार भल किट इज ना सर डिफरेंस रो नो 
because the difference no, it, of unit, unit, uh, magnitude is more. Uh, anyway, any question? Uji parchana nai magnitude of magnitude kona or direct difference in magnitude kona or difference in direction kona. Uji parla na nai. Just a fact. Direction ta hoje. Ame jeta le label koru chhu rank one, rank two, rank three. Direction of difference only says that who is higher and who is lower. Magnitude will say how much. One is higher and how much one is lower. Magnitude basically, I mean, the value they do, which direction, the jo parameters, who set a magnitude. Value, set a mag, set a interval scale. Value only interval scale as it. I guess. Which part you know? Magnitude of difference, direction, that only you know. Just that only only direction is available in the scale. It is a ordinal scale. It is an ordinal scale. When both magnitude and direction are available, it is interval scale. Now, to summarize, or nominal scale has no magnitude, no direction. Ordinal scale has only direction but no magnitude. Interval scale has both direction and magnitude. Now, what is the final and the best scale? Best scale is ratio scale. Ratio scale. What should be the characteristics? It must have direction. It must have magnitude, and beyond that, ratio sir, scale. Not audible, sir. Not audible. Hello. So you clearly audible. Again, repeat, ah. sir. Sir, repeat ah, so again, sir. Repeat again. Repeat for you. Nominal scale has no direction, no magnitude. Ordinal scale has only direction but no magnitude. Interval scale has both direction and magnitude. They are high, higher in order. Some of the poorest scale are nominal, tower is ordinal, tower is interval. And the next higher scale is a ratio scale, the best scale. And what is the what are the characteristics? First, it it must. Must have direction, knowledge of direction. It must have knowledge of magnitude, and beyond these two, it has two special characteristics. One, equal intervals. Equal intervals, or equal measurement intervals in scale, or equidistant scale points in various name you can call equidistant scale points. Equal intervals in measurement, and. Another important thing is it has an absolute zero. If all these four conditions are fulfilled, then it is ratio scale. Now the question is, what is absolute zero? What is the concept of absolute zero? Absolute zero means when the concept does not exist. The value does not exist. Zero means it is not there. Example, zero height. If I say that that person is having a zero height, does it mean anything? That our height zero. On that, the table of length zero means it does not exist. It is zero, but it is it is absolute zero. Absolute zero. That zero. Koi thala mane tar kisi hoyi bani sir. That that variable doesn't exist at all. ये घर रो लंबा जीरो माने घर नाही जीरो इज एब्सोल्युटली नील किंतु मो सपोजिंग कहिनी सी इज हैविंग ए जीरो फिगर व्हाट डज इट मीन इट डजंट एग्जिस्ट जीरो फिगर इज ए कनोटेशन जीरो फिगर कहले इट मीन्स समथिंग मीन्स दैट इज नॉट एब्सोल्युट जीरो व्हेन जीरो इन ए स्केल और वेरिएबल स्केल Does not indicate anything. It is absolute zero. Bujela na nae absolute zero or ta suman. Yes, sir. Bujela na absolute zero. Ah, sir. That zero temperature absolute na or absolute? Absolute, but zero mane absolute. Kya koi absolute? An absolute zero. 
जीरो टेम्परेचर पर सुन चो अमुक जगह जीरो टेम्परेचर तक टेम्परेचर ना टेम्परेचर तो अच्छी जीरो टेम्परेचर The zero example because I really don't have to understand Odia. I'm not from Odisha. No, I'm telling you, I'm telling you in English. I'm telling you in English. Zero temperature. Thank you. Zero temperature. Whether it is something, it refers to some temperature or not. When I say it is it, zero tem zero temperature in Alaska. It does. It does it exist, does. sir. Means that zero does is not actually. अनदर इंपोर्टेंट थिंग इन रेशियो स्केल इक्वी डिस्टेंस स्केल मेजरमेंट स्केल वैल्यू नाउ आई एम आस्किंग यू ए क्वेश्चन समवन हैज गॉट 20 इन मैथमेटिक्स इन ए क्लास अनदर पर्सन गॉट 40 इन मैथमेटिक्स इन द सेम क्लास कैन यू से दैट द पर्सन हु गॉट 40 इज एग्जैक्टली ट्वाइस एज Competent in mathematics as the person who has got to T. No, no, sir. No, sir. No, because the scale values are not in equidistant points. This is an interval scale is possible, but not a ratio scale. Ratio scale means the scale value scale points must be in equidistant. Ten must be twice of five. Twenty must be twice of ten. Fifteen must be three times five. Supposing you have fifteen rupees and I have five rupees, I ask you. Someone asked me how much money did she has. I can say she has three times money because the scale value is equal. Do you get the point? What is meaning by uh, equidistant scale value? Yes, sir. Jyoti. पांच और दो ही गुने दस नहीं हैं। अगेन इंग्लिश। इफ टेन इज टेन इज नॉट टू टाइम्स ऑफ़ फाइव। इफ इट इज़ द कंडीशन, देन दिस इज़ नॉट इक्विडिस्टेंस स्केल। बट हाई दिस दिस टेबल इज़ फाइव फीट हाइट एंड द अनदर टेबल इज़ टेन फीट हाइट। आई कैन सेइ यस दिस इज़ एक्सेक्टली टू टाइम्स � the scale of measurement important concept kodak am khali koi jini because in one class i will have to cover up many concepts and next concept is about parametric and non parametric statistics ta purguru au re concept let me discuss first because that is more relevant to you than when uh, before the, this descriptive and inferential statistics when we classify the kinds of statistics that we use in our research in our um, uh, kind of um, uh, statistics behavioral science there are descriptive statistics and inferential statistics what are those kind of things what are the classification of descriptive and inferential statistics when i say supposing you are 10 uh, 21 students here in this uh, online class supposing i get to know all your age and say that all your the average your average age is 7 and 20 suppose you to mars i ask you all your age and i get an average of that and i found a mean or average of all your age 
and I am I am computing the statistics. Someone asked me, what are what is the average age of students in the PG program of psychology? Then I can say they are around uh, their average age is around twenty years. And I am describing. I am giving. I am giving description of you by by using the statistics, and that is a descriptive statistics. But psychologists, statisticians have developed techniques and methods by which they can get information from a small group, from a group of persons, and from that information, they can inform knowledge about a large population. Do you get my point? Supposing by using your average age, I can predict. I can say that all over India, those who are taking uh, PG courses, their average is around twenty years. If I can use the statistics and get that knowledge, then I am using an inferential statistics. Inferential statistics is applying the statistical methods. To a smaller group, which technically is known as sample, to derive something, some knowledge about population, means by knowing information from ten people, if I can help to know about hundred people from that ten people, then I am I need to use inferential statistics. Inferential means drawing inference from a sample about population. Is that concept clear? Inferential, descriptive, and inferential statistics. Descriptive is about a group that I am interested. Inferential is about a population I am interested, but I I don't have the population at my hand. By by gaining knowledge from the group, I infer. Supposing I want, I I tell you, I ask someone, how is that girl? The person says, "I don't know the girl, but I know the mother. I can tell about the girl from the from the." And then the person is inferencing about the girl. When you know small information about a group, some information about a group, and you extend that knowledge by statistical application, not by common sense, to a larger group called population, you are using inferential statistics. And inferential statistics is a big instrument. It's a big technology. For research of the present time, it is one of the best thing that psychologists or professionals or statistical professionals have discovered. Inferential descriptive is another thing. Idea. But if you have any other idea, then you can ask. If you have any other idea, then ask. Or else I will proceed. And next comes uh, uh, parametric and non-parametric statistics. It is based on the concept of inferential. Parametric and non-parametric statistics. What is that concept? <laughs> How it is based on the concept of uh, inferential and descriptive statistics? When we are inferring about certain thing, by knowing ten person, we are inferring about two hundred persons. Dosa jono ko bishare jani kiri, ame dui saal ko bishare koi bo. And we claim that we are scientists. We are not making imagination. We are not making guesswork or like that. We must have to have some methodological uh, thing to prove. Then, inferential statistics, if it is used, it must have certain kinds of assumptions to fulfil, certain kinds of conditions to fulfil. Those conditions will be fulfilled. Koruni, I cannot explain, or I cannot uh, make inferences about the population. Those are called assumptions of parametric statistics. Means before I apply parametric statistics to make any assumption, to make any inference about the population, I must fulfill certain conditions. And one condition is the distribution of the variable in the population. The variable must be normally distributed in the population if I am to apply. Parametric statistics. Normal distribution, the total value will be 
talk to you i will be telling what is normal distribution and how it is applied on your book reads but one thing you must remember assumption that you can only use parametric statistics for assumption for inference only when certain conditions are fulfilled about data about the variable if those conditions are not fulfilled then you cannot use parametric statistics and one condition is that the variable must be normally distributed in the population or the must have some predictable distribution खाली नॉर्मल नहीं है ऑनलाइन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है लेकिन अपो बट यूजुअली इन आवर बिहेवियरल साइंस वी एम्फासाइज ऑन नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन बट देयर कैन बी अदर रिपोर्ट देयर शुड बी सम नोन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन विदाउट अ नोन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन पैरामेट्रिक स्टैटिस्टिक्स कैन बी कैन नॉट बी यूज्ड फॉर इंफरेंस एंड देन अदर इंपोर्टेंट एसेंशन अबाउट पैरामेट्रिक स्टैटिस्टिक्स इज दैट द डाटा मस्ट बी आइदर इन इंटरवल स्केल or in a ratio scale minimum minimum interval scale ratio scale is better if the data is not in interval scale at the minimum then you cannot use parametric statistics next thing is non parametric statistics non parametric statistics is less same purpose it can be used for inferential purposes but it has some limited generalizability due to due to that the situation where we are we, we use parametric we are more powerful our statistical our the basic inference is more powerful when we use non parametric we are supposed to be weak in our inference but statisticians have allowed us even to use non parametric statistics for inferential purposes both these statistical procedures will be taught to you afterwards now you just know there are two kinds of thing and non parametric can be used when there is no 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 distribution about the data and further also when the data is given nominal scale nominal ordinal interval ratio interval ratio thile to we are supposed to use parametric but nominal ordinal if you are we are not supposed uh, our data is not in uh, interval scale we can go for non parametric statistics these are something about the parametric non parametric and inferential and descriptive statistics all these statistics are being largely in use for your kind of research for anything that you do to progress in knowledge of behavioral science those are very very common uses then mo tumko pray to tikke tikke idea deli what is non parametric parametric and uh, inferential descriptive what are the basic major assumptions other assumptions are there those do you have to read but major assumptions i told parametric uh, distribution start the uh, mane uh, known distribution and scale non parametric no distribution and scale is ordinal or nominal now next thing what i want to tell you about there are naturally there are some body you mane in your book advantages of non parametric statistics naturally advantage ala when we do not have parametric is always mane uh, the give us the condition that is our sample should have should have should have to be a large sample we must have in, to investigate i mean patch on a high by taking high people we are not supposed to use parametric statistics then on large sample therefore non parametric when we are when we are constrained to have a large sample we can go for non parametric many advantages are there when we don't have a uh, or uh, interval scale we have to go for non parametric it has many advantages by default and then disadvantages are many also what can what we can do with a parametric statistics we can do with a non parametric statistics we cannot have a same force of <coughs> conviction with parametric statistics uh, with non parametric statistics as you have conviction in parametric statistics do you get the point so no more basic things about parametric non parametric and inferential descriptive oi the and the next thing uh, next thing is some idea about uh, significance of difference between means i am going one by one about your book one tumi jodi pakare bohi rakhicho you can go through two the important things i am discussing with you about the uh, significance of difference between means of two 
and samples, means. Now, what is the significance, what the difference between means? Let me give you, give you an example. Supposing someone asks you, there are two uh, classes in um, uh, class 9, A, section A and section B, and the principal asks you, as a teacher, you are a teacher, and the principal asks you, can you say me which section is better in um, uh, English? Then what you can do? The teacher give you, give you a, the principal gave you a task. Please tell me what is the uh, is there any difference among the students in class uh, section A and section B with regard to their English ability? What you can do? So we will take the average of uh, English marks in the class no, A and B. No, 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 no. That's that's a good point. Now you have you get to carry a conduct an examination and you take the average of their English marks. And the English mark in class uh, 10A average is 60.3 and in class 10B average is 60.1 but 59.6 60.3 59.6 what will be your conclusion and report to the principal sir so section b is performing better than section a section b is better no sorry better. sorry no no section a is better than section b sorry huh. and here it is only your common sense it is not a scientific report because section A, the principal is not asking you to tell about their average and their performance. The principal requires the information for any kind of special uh, provisions. If actually some section is better, poor, then there will be some special classes for them. Securing 60.1 uh, average in one class and in 59.9 in another class, it doesn't actually say commonly, common sense says, but it's not, it is mathematical difference, but it is not a statistical difference. Kindly, supposing you will be doing another examination 10 days after, and you find that section B average is 62.3 and section A average is 61.4, what will be your reply to the principal? In after four days, you carry out the English examination again, and this is the result. What you will say? You will contradict your own conclusion. And the that is correct. Do, do you do you uh, do you know? Can, uh, it is. Do you feel it, what is I'm saying? it is. It con is contradicting, sir. Huh. On average basis. But, but this is not the method. The method is statistics. And when you have two means, you have to use statistical processes. You do see comparison of uh, you means between the groups. You have to adopt statistical processes to give a scientific conclusion. And those statistical processes for comparing two means in parametric statistics, it is called t-test. And in non-parametric statistics, it is called um, there is another test, huh? U test, man with me, U test. Do you get the point? When you apply the data to a statistical mechanism, then you can, with guarantee, with some level of guarantee, you can say that yes, this section is better than B, or there is no difference in these two sections, or this section is poorer than the other section. You can make a scientific conclusion only when you apply a T test or man with the U test. If it is in a uh, ordinal your scale, but T test is most desirable kind of thing here. And then you can have a comparison. Now here I would like I would like to uh, explain another very important concept to you with re, with regard to this under this condition. We take it The concept will come afterwards, but here it is relevant to discuss with you. And that concept is called <coughs> significance level level of significance. Now, when you report to the principal, yes, section I conducted statistical analysis and I found section A is better than section B. 
the principal will ask you, are you 100% sure? What you will reply? Even if you adopt a statistical procedure, no statistical procedure can guarantee you 100%. Therefore, statisticians have allowed us some part of the error. They said that when you are using any kind of statistics, your conclusion, if it is statistically supported, then you have to report what percentage of error is likely in your conclusion. If it is 5% or less, then it is accepted. If statistics will communicate you, what is the probability of your error? And if the error is more, more than 5%, then your conclusion will not be accepted. When you communicate to the principal, yes, there is difference and the error may be is most likely less than 5%. And that is called the level of significance. Level of significance is the level of error being allowed to the research community. And it has two formality. Formally, it has two levels. 0 0.05, 0 0.01, and it is noted in statistics as P. P is, whenever you report any statistical finding, you say P is less than 0 0.05, and less than 0 0.05, am I audible? You put a call for us. Yes, audible, sir. Rina, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. So, sir, so the uh, level of error is 0 0.05 to 0 0.01. Is it's an assumption or it is for every uh, uh, statistical experiment that we do? Anything, anything. Am I, is it that I am audible now? Yes, you are audible. Uh, no, any question you want to ask? Sir, the level of uh, significance that you have mentioned, 0 0.05 to 0, uh, 0 0.01, is it a standard uh, variance that is allowed or uh, it varies from it test to be, test? It is a formal, formally allowed. You have, you can have maximum, it is, it is referred to as P. When you say level of significance, level of significance is referred to as a small P. Small P means probability of error. <coughs> And the probability of error is, you have to report that the probability of error is less than 0 0.05, means less than 5%. If it is, if it is greater than 0 0.05, finally after uh, applying your statistics, if you write P is greater than 0 .0 0 0.05, then you have to report to the principal that there is no difference. The difference is not absorbed. If it is less than 0 0.05, you can say that report to the principal, yes, there is a difference. And if the principal is uh, asking you, is it 100%? You can say, no, I can say that with a 95% guarantee. Because there may be 5% error. 100% is never a uh, final end, end of anything. If you find that it is P is less than 0, 1, then you can say, you can say that I can guarantee 99%. Maybe there is 1% error. And that is in statistic, it is called level of significance. That concept we will have to deal with. And then, <laughs> next thing is about, next chapter, descriptive and inferential statistics. I have already told you about what, I, what is descriptive statistics and what is inferential statistics. And graphical presentation of data, something is there. There are four different kinds of graphs uh, in statistics being used. Polygon, histogram, uh, uh, cum cumulative frequency curve, and cumulative frequency percentage curve or OGAI. Charity prakar of graphic representation, common graphic representation. There are many, but usually there are four common graphic representation in statistical data, statistical presentation of data. Polygon, histogram and uh, uh, 
cumulative frequency curve and cumulative frequency percentage curve. In polygon, when you are uh, plotting a polygon, you have midpoints of the data in the x-axis. Data will have a group frequency distribution and when you report the midpoints of the data in the x-axis and the frequency in the y-axis, that results in a polygon. And if you report the class intervals or class limits in the uh, x-axis and in the y-axis uh, you report the frequencies, then it is a histogram. You, you will read that. It is very book. And if you report the limits in the x-axis and cumulative frequency in the y-axis, cumulative frequency percentage, cumulative frequency in the y-axis, then it is a cumulative frequency curve. Limits in the x-axis and uh, cumulative percentage frequency in the y-axis, then it is a cumulative frequency curve, percentage curve or okay. Okay, so basic idea. Polygon, midpoint, frequency. Histogram, midpoint, sorry, limits, frequency. Uh, uh, yeah. Cumulative frequency curve, limits, and cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency curve, limits, and percentage. These are the four graphs. You will read, you read and you will know. And the next is uh, measures of central tendency. This, this is a, a kind of descriptive statistics. Measures of central tendency. One of the measures of central tendency, you are very well aware. Central tendency means when, uh, I have already told you, this is a descriptive statistics. When you want to describe a group or describe a set of data, you can use the measures of central tendency. If there are 20 students in the class and you want to tell something about them, supposing about their uh, uh, mathematical skill, you can use their average num mathematics number as your indicator that someone asked you, how are the students in the class? How are the students' mathematical skill in the class? You can report on the basis of their mean. Mean score on sorry, you can tell, oh, this is, uh, they, are, they are around 50% uh, uh, in skill. If their average is around 50. Mean is that is a measure of central tendency. Similarly, median is another measure of central tendency. When you are using the median, you are saying yes, a point in the value. Supposing you say the median of this class is uh, 45. That means 50% of the student in the class has score has, uh, above 45 and 50% below 45. Do you get the idea? Median is a just split, midline split. That is the median. And mood. Mood is just a very immediately appearing central tendency. That is the mode of the class. Maximum pila have scored two. The mode is also a central tendency. And now there are different methods of uh, calculating mode. cover screen share mean median mode. And then comes measures of variability, range, average deviation, quartile deviation, and standard deviation. Measures of central tendency gives you an idea about the central value of a group, mean, median and more. Measures of variability, as it appears in the term, it is called measures of dispersion. <coughs> measures of dispersion means how, to what extent, students vary from the central value. Good class, the average is, average mark is, a student is 50 and lowest mark is 5, highest mark is 95. I go to class re, average is 50, lowest is 30, highest is 70. Which class has more dispersion, more variation? Sunita. Sir, please repeat the question. Two classes. First class, average 50, 
समस्त मुझे कम रखी लोएस्ट इज फाइव हाइएस्ट इज नाइंटी फाइव इन अनादर क्लास एवरेज इज फिफ्टी लोएस्ट इज थर्टी हाइएस्ट इज सेवेन्टी फाइव हुई क्लास हाज लार्जर वेरिएशन द सेकंड क्लास था बी सेक्शन बी सेक्शन लार्जर वेरिएशन anything else i have covered about uh, measures of variability and measures of central tendency now next thing is about hypothesis testing you know i will have to give you some basic idea about basic statistical things important things common sense ideas and i have to proceed next thing is hypothesis testing already i have discussed with you about hypothesis testing what is hypothesis testing the principal asked you to say to report whether section a is better or section b b is better means you have two hypothesis for you three hypothesis one first hypothesis there is no difference in section a and b you will have you will have to prove out of these three things one there is no difference among them and this hypothesis is called null hypothesis which person and in order to report the principle you have three things one there is no difference second a is better than the b better than section b Third, B is section better than section A. Both the second and third are called research hypothesis or alternative hypothesis. So our concept is that null hypothesis. Kono, what is null hypothesis? What is alternative and research hypothesis? The first one is null hypothesis. When you say that there may be no difference among the students, the second one is. H1 null hypothesis is reported is written as H0. Research hypothesis is written as H1. And if you have two research hypotheses, you can write H1, H2. <coughs> Now, finally, you have to accept one of them, either null or research one or research two. And this is called hypothesis. Means finally, by applying statistics, you have to conclude H zero is true, or H one is true, or H two is true. Either of these three, one is only true, <coughs> and that is hypothesis testing or decision making about hypothesis. Hypothesis testing the author will learn or not. And then type one and type two error. These are all important concepts, basic concepts I am discussing. What is type one and type two error? This is a very difficult, okay, difficult concept. Be mindful about understanding type one and type two error. And I told you about the level of significance. Means you are allowed five percent error in your report if your error is. You can con you can uh, uh, prove, or you can you are convinced that your error is less than five percent. Then you can say that this is what is the kind of thing. 
but in certain conditions, <coughs> someone was asking me, is, is it formally fixed? Yes, among research community, it is fixed. If it is less than 5% error, you are accepted. If it is more than 5% error, you are not accepted. But sometimes these kind of rigid conditions also lead to some kind of error. And those errors are called type 1 and type 2 errors. What is that? <coughs> rigid kind of conditions. Type 1 error is, supposing <coughs> you said that you have committed less than 5% error and thereby your research hypothesis is accepted. Alternative hypothesis is accepted. They are, it's true. But actually it is not the truth. <coughs> the section A is better than section B. But in reality, there is something reality. You are trying to find out that reality, but you, you may have committed error. You said that section A is actually better than section B. But actually, in reality, there is, there is no difference. Then section A is not better. Means you have committed an error. Means you have rejected a true null hypothesis. Am I audible? Is it is it there? Audible, sir. Yes, sir. Is it is it there? Communication is there. My phone call yes, is there. Sir. Yes, 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 Jetable when you reject a true null hypothesis, when you accept a false null hypothesis, accept a false null, false null hypothesis, you are committing a kind of error called type 1 error. And when you reject a true null hypothesis, you are committing an error called a type 2 error. And that acceptance or rejection depends on your level of significance. Tomorrow, I will be discussing this, this thing with you and some other basic concept. Then we will go for, for 10 minutes. I will discuss this thing and then I will, I will be discussing the next second book. Is it okay? Okay, sir. Rina. So, uh, sir uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, go, go. Anything you want to say? Do you get your concept clarified? Yes, sir. 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 Jyoti, yes, if you don't have time, it is a big yes, course. Every, every day we have to cover up many, many major concepts. Whenever it will be possible, I will be sharing the PPT. Whenever it will be required, I will be sharing. PPT, I will be sharing in the next class. Thank you, sir. Hello. Please share, Kori. Thank you, sir. Anyway, bye. Bye. Good night. Thank you, sir. Bye. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hello, Payal. Yes, 